Hey, it's Erin. I've always loved the golden era of bodybuilding. This is when the physiques were just so aesthetically appealing. They had that three to one ratio, the shoulders to waist, and they also had a lot less equipment, which is why it's so incredibly impressive that they were able to be so resourceful and train so intuitively to get those great physiques. Now, the golden era of bodybuilding was from about the 1950s to the 1970s. And I thought it might be kind of fun to look back and see what unique exercises they used in order to achieve those amazing physiques. Now, because they relied a lot on dumbbells and barbells, we're looking at many compound movements, which are great for adding mass overall. So you're able to train large muscle groups, auxiliary muscles, stabilizers. And a lot of times they would incorporate isolation exercises as the icing on the cake. So if they wanted to, for example, hit a specific head of the triceps or work on the serratus, there were isolation exercises that would do that. They often trained for hours and hours a day, which of course is not feasible today. But I thought we would take some of the coolest exercises, put a little workout together, train total body, and see if those guys back then were onto something. Is this something that we should bring back? Or should we leave some of these crazy looking exercises to the past? Without further ado, let's get into the gym and train golden era style. Let's start off big with the Jefferson deadlift. This was invented by Charles Jefferson, and this lift is gonna put a lot less force on your spine than traditional deadlifts or squats. So if you have back pain, this could be a good option. It's also an anti-rotational exercise, which means you're gonna work a lot on core strength here. Now, for the setup, you wanna get your bar loaded. I would suggest going with a light weight to start and you wanna put your feet into an L shape. So your back leg is, or your back foot is gonna be parallel to the bar and your front foot is going to be at a 90 degree angle to the bar. Now you can either use a mixed grip or you can use an overhand grip. I prefer the overhand grip, but give it a try. Also, you wanna to try to vary your stance to get the stance that feels good for you. I settled on a one and a half times shoulder width stance and this seemed to be okay. Now for this exercise, you're going to want to switch sides for every set. So this means that you're gonna be training both your dominant side and your non-dominant side. And you will notice that one side is gonna be much stronger than the other. Surprisingly, my left side was much better than my right foot facing forward side. So for this exercise, I think it can be really good to incorporate on a regular basis as it trains the entire posterior chain. You're gonna get some upper body training. Uh, another key point here is you wanna make sure that you keep your back nice and flat, your spine neutral, and think about pushing your weight through the heels as you drive up. Next, we're moving on to a cross bench pullover. Now, I'm a fan of traditional pullovers laying just right across the bench, but this cross bench variety is going to have you at a 90 degree angle to the bench with your shoulders on the bench, feet about shoulder width apart, and you want your hips nice and low. Now, it can be a little bit tough to get the dumbbell to where you want it to go. I take the dumbbell, place it on my hip, and bring it up to my chest. And you wanna make sure that your thumbs are under the dumbbell, the top part of the dumbbell, and that you have a good hold on the top of the dumbbell with the rest of your fingers. So you almost wanna kind of cross your thumbs at the bottom, and then you're going to press the dumbbell directly overhead. Now keep in mind, you don't have any kind of resistance at this overhead point where the dumbbell is perpendicular to the floor. So you wanna keep a soft bend to the elbow, slowly lower the weight down and lower to a good, nice weighted stretch point, keeping those hips down, keeping your core nice and tight and bring that dumbbell back, making sure that you keep the same level of bend in your elbow throughout the exercise. Now, it's a good idea to stop just a little bit short of perpendicular because you wanna keep that constant tension on the muscle. This variation is excellent for really hitting that end point and really hitting the lats, the chest, the serratus, 
triceps. So it is almost a total upper body move and you'll find you'll need a little bit less weight on this variation because it's actually a lot harder than laying just right across the bench. Next, we're going to move on to a cross body dumbbell triceps extension. And this is excellent for hitting that lateral head of the triceps. So if you want a little extra mass on the outside of the arm to give you nice curve right below the shoulder. This is a great variation for you. Now you can spot yourself with the non-working arm if you would like. And what I do is I kind of help myself up holding that dumbbell and the dumbbell is going to be at a 90 degree angle to your body. And as you lower the dumbbell, you want to make sure that you're using just your elbow as the hinge here. So you're going to lower that dumbbell, get a really nice stretch and you're lowering it right to the opposite pec and then coming back up again. So you want to spend the most time on getting that nice stretch as you lower the dumbbell, not so much time as your arm is extended because you're not going to have that tension on the muscle. Next, we're moving on to the sissy squat. Now, this is something that if you have knee issues, I definitely would not recommend doing this exercise. If you're training at home, you've got limited equipment, you want to get massive quads, or at least have some really nice shapely quads. This is an excellent exercise. You want to make sure you have something sturdy. If you're just starting out, I would say you can even do these kneeling, do some reverse Nordic curls. This is a good way to get into the sissy squat. Now, if you've got really strong quads, go ahead and add weight and you want to make sure you're holding on to something nice and sturdy feet. You want your feet a little bit more narrow than shoulder width. You're going to stand on the balls of the foot or on your toes and make sure you keep your body in plank position and you're going to lower yourself down. And as you lower yourself down, you want to think of the knee as the hinge here. So you're almost thinking of driving your knees towards the ground forward, keeping your your upper body nice and still, keep your core nice and tight, and holding that plate right over your chest, looking up, and then you're going to use just your quads to drive yourself back up. And holding onto something is very important so you can give yourself that, self that extra stability and you can actually spot yourself as those last few reps get pretty difficult. Next exercise is the dumbbell glute bridge floor press or dumbbell hip bridge floor press. Now for this exercise, it is excellent for improving your hip drive, for engaging the glutes and just for absolute strength. It's a little bit tough in the setup and I would also recommend going a little bit lighter on this exercise as you get the hang of it. So you're going to sit on the floor, you've got dumbbells on either side, and what you want to do is place the bottom part of the dumbbells on your upper thigh and you're going to kick them up to your chest to where it's very easy when you lay back, you're just going to extend the dumbbells out slightly so you're in proper pressing form and you want to make sure that you get your hips into that glute bridge position, engage the glutes with a nice isometric squeeze and then you're just going to drive those dumbbells straight up and slowly lower them until you're back to that starting position. This is great for working on just absolute power. So you're at that dead stop and then you're going to use explosive power to drive those dumbbells up all the while keeping constant tension on those glutes. Last exercise is the Bradford press. This was invented by Jim Bradford. He was a strong man and he was known for his overhead pressing strength. Now, if you have any kind of shoulder issues, this may not be a great option, but if you've got healthy shoulders and you're looking for something that is just going to give you an insane pump, help you work on shoulder mobility, help you really train all heads of the shoulders. This is an excellent exercise. Now for this particular exercise, you wanna go very light because one rep is a long way and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you're gonna grasp the bar with an overhand grip and you're gonna use a grip that is about one and a half times to two times shoulder width. So you wanna go a little bit wider here and you're going to press the barbell up 
and then you're going to move it towards the back of your body and lower that barbell behind your neck to a point that is comfortable for you. I would not lower all the way down. Um, I would just lower again to a point that's comfortable to you. And then you're going to bring the barbell back to the starting position and that is one rep. So you can see why you wanna go lighter on this because you're keeping constant tension on those delts and you should really feel a burn after just a few reps. This is an, an excellent variation for just building beautiful shoulders. What did you think of the exercises? Are you going to try any of them? I think I'm going to keep the Jefferson deadlift. I'm gonna add it to my current routine. There was such a stark difference for me in the left side versus the right side. And this is really exposing some weaknesses that I have in my strength and things that I can work on, which of course is tough, but it's nice to have that challenge and nice to be able to strengthen your weaknesses to create a more complete physique. I actually really liked that cross bench dumbbell pullover. It's a lot different and I felt it a lot more than the traditional pullovers that I had been doing. The Bradford press, this is something that I have been doing for years and I'll continue to do. I absolutely love it and typically we'll use it more as a finisher exercise. Sissy squats, what's not to love with those? Those are very difficult and I think anytime you can incorporate compound movements that are body weight, that train basically every muscle in the body, you're going to get stronger overall. You're gonna work on that proprioception, which is body awareness, and you're just gonna look like a total badass in the gym. <laughs> So that's it for this time. If you would like to have a workout program that is just done for you, ready to go, I have so many options on the website. Whether you're looking to build a bikini bod or if you're looking just to build glutes or if you're looking to gain muscle overall or lean down, check out some of the options at my site. I'll leave a link in the description below. That's it for this time. Until next time, train smart, train hard, and have fun, y'all.